And I said to her, honestly, dear, I, I have nothing, but believe me, I will be, I will return everything. She starts screaming. She said that, darn, like, if you won't come back immediately now to Ukraine, uh, we won't be living anymore together and so on. And I said, I, I really don't care what you are saying. I'm doing that for you and my son. And I just dropped the phone and keep hustling, keep pushing it and about to quit. I, I know I never had things to quit. Welcome to Beyond the File, the podcast where we talk to leaders and entrepreneurs about their biggest business failures. We'll deep dive into how they overcame these setbacks, the lessons they learned from them, all to help you gain valuable insights. Failure is an essential part of the business journey, as well as being the key to success. So we're here to show you how to thrive from it. Today, we are joined by Anatoly Lubinsky, and he is not just an entrepreneur, He's an e-commerce expert, a seasoned salesman, and the proud recipient of the prestigious Two Comma Club Awards, not just once, but four times. As the founder of the GSM Growth Agency, Anatoni leads a team dedicated to helping e-commerce entrepreneurs grow their businesses to six and seven figures in revenue. Anatoni's life is a testament to resilience and triumph over adversity. From starting as a waiter in a Dubai restaurant to transforming his life in just five years into a seven-figure e-commerce success to also escaping Ukraine after the Russian invasion. Anatoly exemplifies the power of determination and entrepreneurial spirit. In this episode, Anatoly shares his story of embracing the world of e-commerce and it nearly ending in disaster and bankruptcy. He will share that it was very much the motivation of the desire to provide for his family that kept him going. So join us for a captivating conversation as Anatoni reflects on his entrepreneurial path, proving that every setback is an opportunity for growth. This is Beyond the Fail with Anatoni Lubinsky. Anatoly, thanks so much for being here today. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing great, just uh, appreciate it. And I'm really happy to be here and uh, have this kind of recording with you. Hopefully, I will share some golden things for people who are listening to us. Absolutely. Well, I know with your level of experience, I know there will be some some gems. So take us back. Where did it all start for you in business? Oh, yeah. Like it, it started actually back uh, in 2017. The moment when I decided that I'm going to be running the business, it was uh, 2017. July when I read a book uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad and I'm like okay so this is something which is like definitely I was looking on different uh, different way in my life because I was always thinking about being employer and so on yeah so story started in 2017 February when I found out that I will be a father my wife said to me that she she's pregnant and we were completely broke renting the tiny uh, small master bedroom in the two bedroom apartments with another family because we were not able to afford that. And like uh, she said that she's pregnant, start crying. And I understand what we, in what kind of position we are. And I, I promised to myself that, hey, like I'm going to be managing and create something better for my son. That at that moment, I didn't know that it will be son, that I will create it uh, like something better than I am mm. today. I'm having today. And this is actually, it was a long run, but uh, I promised to myself and was able to achieve it finally. So what, what would you say was the, the most pivotal moment in that? Was it the fact that you found out that you were having a baby or was it, I suppose, another sense in your life that things weren't going the way that you wanted? Yeah. So uh, the moment when I, like the crucial moment in my life, which completely changed everything, it's when I found out that I'm going to be a father. Uh, that moment I realized how broke I am and that how impossible, uh, how impossible to like deliver the baby uh, in UAE. Uh, you, we used to live in Dubai at that moment, was working as uh, donkeys like nonstop and were not able even to rent the simple apartment. So I, in my brain, I start just thinking how I can make more money, how, how I can like mm. earn some extra income. I start getting part times here and there and I was looking for some kind of management position you know all my brain setup was average person setup which is like 
uh, get a good work, good job, like grow uh, there in the like uh, from like so let's say salesperson to sales manager, general manager, and so on, and to, like you secured and all good. But when I have seen uh, how my sales manager, which is amazing dude with an incredible experience, like super super uh, experienced person in sales and uh, resp uh, respected person in UAE has been fired as a dog like when the, they call him and just shut down his office and uh, took his laptop out and so on and mm -hmm. guy who used to work for five years in the company was sh like kick it out like uh, from the door in 5 30 p.m without even notice period and nothing it was insane big spear show up for me that what the fuck like say sorry for for this word but this is only what can describe like we all realize that like the whatever you will put at work uh, nobody would respect that and I, I i read that book from robert kiyosaki and realized oh whoa i was looking on different way i have to think how i can, can become entrepreneur and after that the investor and like what's the way to overtake all those steps because i won't be in charge of my life i won't be in charge of what how much i'm making not someone else will tell me what to do and it wasn't about freedom it was about this is how i can make more this is how i can uh, become responsible for my uh, own uh, income for my own success and fails and i i read a lot of business books that moment and uh, i found out the common thing that all the wealthy people were just doing the same thing they were never quit and done more what's working i like okay let's try find out what's what's going to be working for me so did you have any entrepreneurial tendencies ever in your life before that moment was there any kind of you know what did your background look like before that were you just employed in jobs and it didn't have any entrepreneurial kind of um passions or motivations uh, actually, it's a great question because, <clears throat> to be honest with you, uh, I'm a Ukrainian guy. I moved to UAE because uh, I need to help to my mom to pay the mortgage, my university, master degree in finance. My mom was not able to pay, so we took the loan, like we took the mortgage to like uh, buy the car. Uh, like I need to help mom a lot, and in the same time, like I, I'm the young guy who finished university with full of loans, credit cards, and all that stuff, and it was just red race. And in Ukraine, the salary is an average like four hundred dollars up to four hundred dollars. So, and I understood that I need, I want to see the world. I never been abroad. Like I used to grow up in the simple family, which is well, like since thirteen year old, I supposed to work for myself to like you know buy the phone, go outside with the girlfriend and so on because my parents were not able to give, provide that for me. So by that being said, yeah, I was living simple life, but I was always like in charge of several things by myself without anyone asking me like when we are 30 people like guys and girls partying i'm gonna be in charge who's gonna be preparing everything i like guys no worries like i arrange this this and that and it was always like that plus like if there is some kind of you know dangerous situation for example like about to get fighting like uh, 10 people for 10 people i was the guy who was between everyone negotiating and was trying to get things done without the physical touch and several times it was working you know so i was like kind of i had entrepreneurial skills but i didn't know what it means i knew how to uh, speak to people i knew how to manage different situations i was always in charge for my mistakes and i was always in charge for different stuff in my life which is i was thinking that it's just like you know uh, a survival mode but it was was a survival mode but in the same time i when i was looking on other people they were just floating, you know, on the river. They just moving uh, on the way where things are moving. And I was always opposite. Always, like when I moved to UAE, all, uh, I brought their nine friends from the childhood, and we start working as a waiters, assistant waiters. I started as a food runner, and all of them were fine because they start making more than in Ukraine, and they were sitting down, living for free, uh, have food for free, and just saving. Me, I was changing the work, changing the work. They were fighting for some better opportunities again and again. And again, it's entrepreneurial mindset to find better, uh, better opportunities. I just was like not educated to understand where I have to move, but I was just moving, moving, failing, and again moving. My guys like, why you? What are you doing? You always like here you fail, there you fail. Sit down, relax. I like, no guys, it's not for me. And I'm moving again and again and again. And when I start reading the business books, I like, oh. This is calling in, 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 
I couldn't pronounce, you know, I, did, I, I didn't speak English that moment. I like, inter, inter, what does it mean? Like, what? I like, oh, entrepreneurship. Wow. And I like, I love this world. And now I understand w- what is happening, like, with my life in the past. And I understood that this is definitely something for me. And when, the, like, uh, I started understanding that I, ha- I can be in charge for my life, not someone else. Uh, like, uh, I realized that, like, I was always failing several times. It's just because there was something else for me and uh, this is the entrepreneurial journey when you like trying again and again and not quitting until you'll get something what's going to be working for you and just uh, double down on it and trying to squeeze the best performance so it sounds like you had a you know from what i got from what you just said there was leadership skills from an early age uh, and there was this entrepreneurial mindset but you didn't potentially know it as entrepreneurial mindset where did that all come from is that something your parents have instilled in you your siblings your education uh not definitely not an education education was always you have to like dream a uh, dream of the kids in my surrounding was to finish the uh, university and find out the job find out the job as an accountant as a banker and working for like 10 20 years to get like 800 hour salary you know so it will never been my dream and I was ready to work in any dirty place, whatever, just to get extra income and find out what I can do else. But the thing is that my father was an entrepreneur. My, uh, when I grew up, I, I have seen the journey of my father. He was taking care of several cars and uh, delivering the, some uh, di- different, uh, different like parcels and uh, like kind of uh, human base, like moved to, uh, from one city to another city, like a bus trips. Like he had, he built a big company, but he lost the health on it. Now he lost the leg because of diabetes, because of the heart attack. Yeah. He had so much problems in that business and he wasn't able to handle that business. Unfortunately, he wasn't learning on his mistake. I love my fra- father. Uh, he is the example for me. I respect him a lot. But as an entrepreneur, unfortunately, he wasn't, a- he wasn't able to handle the problems. Every single problem, he was just like consuming. And like, uh, instead of coming out with the stronger mindset and the like solution, he was just allowed those problems happen. And those problems were becoming bigger and bigger and snowball effect, catch his uh, health, catch his business. Now he doesn't have business and so on. But what I'm just saying that I was looking on entrepreneurship as this kind of uh, curse, you know, like, come on, I don't want to be an entrepreneur. Like, the, I, I don't want to go have my business because this is a hell. This is hell. Like, I don't want to be there. The most secured way is the growing in the company. So in some ways, he he put you off. Seeing your dad lose his business, that put you off from, from having your own business? It, uh, exactly. Like, I, I was thinking that this is the curse of the man. Like, it's the worst thing where you can go. He never able you know, my mom and my father got divorced it. I was still engaged with the father, but uh, when I was in university, he barely was able to give me like ten, twenty dollars in a week, in a week, wow. to like you know buy some food uh, in university and so on. So and it was like shit because like he was managing such a big company and he was always, always in financial troubles, and like that's why because I wasn't educated and nobody was educating me that actually the business it's a bit different. It's not uh, like about what you're doing. It's about how you're handling the problems, how you're handling them, who you become after that, and how you're moving forward after that. So like uh, I was, when I started educating myself, like, oh, oh, it, it is like, it is completely different. Mm. And that was like a moment for me that, wow, it means like uh, I was just, I, I don't know, I never thought about that, uh, that father, my father is example, but it was in my brain that it's bad. It's bad. Don't look there. Don't look there. It's bad. But when I like consume all that information, I'm like, whoa, I realized what's happening, that I was looking all my life on what happened to my father. And I was thinking that it's the worst thing ever. But at the end, I saw the examples of the successful and unsuccessful people on the examples in the books. And plus some YouTubes I start watching. I like, oh, so this is what's the difference between success and fail. And I want, I want definitely be in that one person of success. I like says, speaking to myself, what you're speaking, like, it's not possible. Like, you're mm. one person, come on. Who, it's you. It's cool. What kind of one person? And I like shutting down my mouth and like, fuck it. Like, move on, move on. <laughs> Especially my wife is, was about to deliver baby. It was October. 
when in July I decided to be an entrepreneur, uh, I realized that I have no, no other option mm. or moving forward or like, uh, like I won't be able to handle. Is it because you essentially, what I would describe as being pushed into a corner and having to try and find a solution and, uh, you know, fight your way out of that corner? Because I was just going to ask that given that your dad's story, that, is enough to put some people off business for the rest of their life. So it's quite a surprise that you actually just turn to entrepreneurship, despite having that, what I would say is to say, in some ways, a negative influence. Is that because you, as you said, you had no other choice, and you felt that I have to do this? Otherwise, well, what was the what was the other option? Yeah, so uh, as I was like saying that, uh, from 13 year old, I was working in several jobs and all those jobs were always heavy lifting stuff like construction, like uh, taking like 15,000 blocks from the yeah. uh, truck to the like project, you know, and several other like heavy lifting stuff, which is like physical labor work. So and uh, I wasn't lo- like I start working as a waiter in Dubai, you know, all whatever it's the heaviest one. And the cheapest one, actually, Uh, I was looking there because this is like, uh, this is how the income looks like, you know, then harder you work, then like, uh, then, then more you possibly will make. But this is, and one by looking on the bad uh, influence from my father. And again, I love him a lot. I respect him a lot. And he's the, the, like, his example for me. But the thing is like how everything was moving there. It's something which is like nobody wants to be in. And like I, I would be stay there forever if I would not decide to like, look, I never read books like in the childhood, in the especially teenager age. I love movies. I love curtains. I love like whatever wasting time mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. Especially serious when I became an adult. But when uh, I moved to UAE, I became responsible for myself only. And later on for my wife, when I got married after one year and like I was fine as there, UAE, it's a great example of where people come in and they are fighting for the better life. Some people staying on the same level, just saving up, buying apartment in five, seven years at home, moving and like starting small business or just uh, going and start working in some other place. This is what's like, for example, some of my friends, but uh, some of the people just coming and fighting, 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 and denying any kind of fails and just moving on until they will get or great position in some company and show them everyone that they can and like to show themselves first of all and start making a really great or they will be understanding the matter of the possibilities in life and start their own business. For me, uh, I wasn't even thinking about uh, and as well, like, you know, I didn't understand entrepreneurship and what this word mean in English, but in the meantime, in UAE, while I was working as a waiter, uh, I took the car for rent for one day and like was driving through, uh, I took the sick leave, like I'm sick, I didn't go to a restaurant. And I was driving all day around because I met one guy who wanted to import the Ukrainian olive oil okay. to uh, Sunflower Oil to UAE. So guess what? I went to every single company who are selling kind of similar stuff, wall selling, uh, the, the, the like market sales, supermarkets, I went everywhere. Guess what? In a couple of days, in one day, I made all the contacts. In a couple of days, I almost signed two companies who were able, were able to buy a couple of containers for test and see if that is going to be good or not. What happened? I brought to that guy these contacts and he promised to me a lot of, a lot of lies. And uh, when I came to him, he was like, yeah, give me contacts. I will contact them. I said like, no, let's yeah. do that together. Like I, I brought that business for you. And at the end he was promising a lot, but when ke- stuff came for the signing contract, he lied, he went without me there. He signed the papers and like, I went out. But uh, what I'm trying to say by that, I always was doing something under regular for just simple employer. I was like, you, this is as well part of entrepreneurship. I just took the stuff and went out and start searching, speaking to people without nobody was paying me. The thing about like, even as let's speak about Robert Kiyosaki from psychology, when he was a kid, uh, the number one thing was reached that was teaching them. It was, you should not work for money. Like you're supposed to work because like you're supposed to understand what job it means. And sometimes this job won't be paid. 
and you're supposed to be fine with that because you are like working for something bigger for some like uh not everything everything's gonna be paid out so when you have the employer mindset like if i won't get paid like eight hours done i'm, I'm leaving mm. but i was like no way like full in full in full in and always getting like first positions in sales in the company where i was working from this food runner i became waiter in three weeks which is like for me it was like huge achievement that time but without english in new country and mm. like the yes. guy who doesn't speak english became a waiter from the food runner so and again it's not about me it's just like about the behavior which is some of the people has and they ready to do the hard work without paying off i was losing so much all the time for something better just uh, i mean financially uh just because i knew that there is something else there is something else which is waiting for me uh one of the examples is jack ma uh one of the, the richest guy in china so what he uh, he was saying in the past when he was just creating alibaba uh before he started in 1990s he was trying himself on the 25 different jobs and every single time he failed and even McDonald's were uh, get everyone who were in interview except him. So every every single job opportunities he was failing. The same was with me, similar uh, that I I applied for ten thousand different companies with this. I sent ten thousand different companies CVs in three and a half years in UAE. Ten thousand. I know that because there was a count uh, where I was sending that from the platform. Ten thousand different, and like I've been around like not 100 but 50 plus interviews every single moment when i can be before the restaurant on my off day like in different time i always was in interviews and every time i was failing 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 for, for really no reason and uh, i was like uh thinking from the beginning that it's some kind of uh unlock and so on but when i start educating myself more and more like oh okay so you just need to try more like uh, Thomas Edison did haven't created the lamp uh, in the first try. He tried twelve thousand times. I like okay, so 10, it means uh, then ten thousand. Yeah, ten thousand. Yeah, no, you did, it ten, means you like did ten thousand applications to match. Yeah, it, right. <laughs> it, 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 I'm just saying that you know, like it means nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine left. To, to, so it's fine uh, and it's working now in the business as well. Every time when we failing, another one, another one, and then finally we find out the solution. Like we had problems with media buying, we were trying, we were searching for some uh, great uh, courses and so on. Again, again, and again, and again, and again. Was good, was bad, was what, what is good, it wasn't really for us, it was a bit different uh, direction. But nothing was worked. And guess what, finally I found out what's really working well. And uh, the things are like switch over so fast. And that 2022 to 2023, was the recorded year in media buying for our company uh, so far just because I was searching for solution for a while and finally got the right one. If I won't be searching for solution and quit on the first fail, I would never ever go get the performance of what we done last year. In total, we were able to finally cross or mark over 24 million in online sales. So like it's just like uh, all about trying, trying, trying until you will finally done it. I mean, some great, some great stuff there. Um, I got quite a few follow-up questions. So, from that, um, those ten thousand applications, was that because you were just determined to succeed? Why, why that many? Or was it you were trying to learn something from from that process by doing it? A bit like what Kiyosaki says in the book, as you mentioned, essentially doing a variety of of jobs and activities in order to learn yeah uh so no nobody asked me that question before i love to speak about that so uh about becoming an entrepreneur it was the final stage i would say so the the the, the ten thousand in the cvs were before mm -hmm. so i was in dubai for five years and first three and a half years were really non-stoppable like cabin crew cabin crew emirates cabin crew etihad cabin crew qatar cabin crew saudi arabia uh, like uh, accountant in one company, accountant us because I, I'm a financial guy yeah? right. with the education in the uh, master degree in finances, banker. Uh, like I was even applying for coffee boy, just went out from the hospitality to the office 
and then like you know build a different cv for myself because hospitality wasn't a good like a beginning when you are in uae i was in banker in ukraine from 18 to 20 i was a banker in ukraine and i was the best sales guy in you i became the short uh, number three uh best salesperson in the bank at, at 18 year old wow like the third one in the region, in the in the Parisian region. And I was shocked because I was so enjoying the sales process. And every time when I was hearing no, I saw the girls next to me, they were crying. I like, well, it's fine. Like, let's call next. And I was doing 150 calls plus a day, like nonstop. I wasn't feel like I wasn't feeling nothing. When, when someone say no, I like, okay, I will catch you later and just making comments and moving on. So I, I, I was enjoying the process. And again, and I didn't know about Thomas Edison. I didn't know about, I, I, I wasn't educated, but I had this kind of uh, mindset. And like, before I got educated, I was just feeling that it's survival mode. It's a survival mode. But when I start to educate myself in the business, I understood that, wow, this is just a common thing, which is like su successful people are doing. And it means like I have to repeat several times and I find out what's going to be working for me. I have to try here and there and find out what's going to be working for me. So, and uh, that's why when uh, I used to work as a waiter in Cipriani in Abu Dhabi, my first hospitality job in uh, UAE, uh, I started applying for any kind of job just to went out of hospitality. Mm. And uh, for me, like I was, my dream was to move to US. I don't have visa. I cannot be there. I now I can, but I couldn't be there. I, it was my dream of my life to go there, even on the plane. You know, in the cargo section, I don't care. Just let me be there. Like I was, don't care. I was watching YouTube videos from the guys who moved there, like kind of, you know, from nothing to something in US, and it was my kind of dream. And I was ready to do any kind of heavy lifting job. But like uh, when I was applying for those 10,000 CVs, it happened during the time. Okay. First, so like first couple of years, uh, it was definitely less. But later on, I find out the platform where I can apply, you know, like hundreds and hundreds a day in bulk. And I knew where I'm applying. I was just putting the filters. So that's why I know I done over 10,000. Right. And I, when I done it, I got my first job out of hospitality. You know, when it's like so that sent really a bunch of them. So the thing is that uh, I wasn't thinking like, again, my brain was thinking in the way that then harder you're going to work physically, then like uh, faster you'll grow and go somewhere for, forward. And like uh, all the jobs which I was applying, it was physical jobs, you know, uh, in the top nightclub as a waiter, supervisor, as a uh, like cabin crew, which is like nonstop, like uh, servicing on the boards like uh, like a real estate agent, whatever is really a hard one, I was going there all the time. But I later on understand, hard and smart has to be combined. Mm -hmm. I mean, you cannot work with no, not hard and just smart. No, it's not possible. But physically, like physical work, construction work and so on, it's not what I have to look for. I didn't understand that that moment and I was applying for any kind of job. When I got my first job out of the hospitality, I was the sales guy uh, I, I got a car and I was like, oh my God, I have a car. <laughs> like, no way. <laughs> Mitsubishi Lancer, it's a dream. It was so funny now I remember it, but I'm really proud that I had these moments in my life because I can compare and share it with my son, this kind of experience. Uh, like I, when I got the car, I was thinking now I, I'm, 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 I, I, I'm successful. Mm -hmm. You know, I got the car and what the thing I was doing, really dirty job. I was going in the suit, in the like uh, nice polishing shoes to the construction work, what is full of dust, like full of sweat, full of like, it's a construction site and was trying to sell some lighting, lighting stuff. Right. Like it was like uh, table lamps, like uh, flooring lamps, like uh, ceiling lamps and so on. And like, I was always going out of this place full of dust, like all the time. And this like kind of nice looking sealed stuff, it was actually like, it wasn't the dream work, I would say. But my guys in hospitality were saying, you're the most successful mm -hmm. guy. Wow, you're awesome. But what, what do, do, do you know? When I got the job, I started making two times less than I was making as a waiter. Wow. But again, I took that risk mm. just to get out. And I was believing that I will be able to get something better because of this, this kind of, you know, remarking CV that I'm now 
on the different position because Dubai never look on the out of UAE wow. experience. They will always, always look UAE experience. So that's why for me it was doesn't matter what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be just getting better and better and I will be able to get better job. So I took the risks with having wife, not able to pay the apartments. And like I said to my, my wife all the time, like, please be patient, please be patient. And I'm shocked that she was always staying with me when we were broke, when I was doing mistakes, when we were losing thousands of dollars, which we never had. I have to borrow from my friends to cover that. And after that, giving to my friends from salary of my wife, from my salary. Like it was a really nightmare, but I'm shocked that she was staying with me. She didn't quit. And she, she was always saying to me that I, I, I'm, I'm trusting you. I, I like it was hard for her. She was crying, but she was saying, I'm, I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you. And I had this kind of pressure and responsibility that shit, like I have to deliver some. And when I found out that I'm going to be a father, that was the last spot. And that moment I was already reading some business books and I understood that uh, like I can, I can, whatever it takes, I'm going to be changing my life and not anymore any kind of like, uh, uh, any kind of like, serious i stopped watching movies i stopped watching tv shows i just started reading books a lot audio books when i'm driving and between uh, the work just do extra part times and finding the solutions where i can go what can i do where can i invest what like it was non-stop uh like searching searching and taking risks again and again and i believe everyone has their own stories I don't want to like lose that. Like uh, I'm, I don't want to. I'm speaking about myself now a lot. I'm feeling a bit uncomfortable. The first time, by the way. <laughs> but I'm, I'm just want to try to say, whoever now in similar situation, you're gonna be done well if you want to. Well, I mean, I think you've given enough examples of how you've come up against adversity and and not quit really. And you know that's a great a great lesson. And just on that. <clears throat> In a number of those stories you said, there was firstly a kind of mindset that you had around the harder you worked, in some ways, the more you suffered in the in the job, the more successful you would be. That was a mindset that you used to have. And then you also mentioned the word survival mode a lot. And obviously, that's kind of similar to suffering. You, you know, you, you're in survival mode. You have to suffer to succeed. Where is that? that kind of mindset come from about suffering um to to succeed in life i suppose uh i believe that it's by looking on the father i mean because he was suffer a lot and but he had a lot of cars he had a lot of employers who were cheating i mean she not, not cheating it's only relationships but i mean who were lying to him stealing from him and he was so nice and so allowed them to do that and like, no, I cannot do like he's uh, he's a good guy and so on. So and all he suffered all his business journey all the time. And uh, when I was looking on, on some other people and they're a bit more successful than so my parents, uh, he was suffering. I mean, it was just surrounding where I grow up and like suffering. It's something which is will bring you like and again. Suffering, uh, I, I, have, I didn't mention the suffering. I mentioned the survival mode, which is, yeah, could be comparable with suffering. I mentioned survival mode in the way of if I want to have a food tomorrow, I need just to hustle today. And again, I didn't know what does it mean, hustle. When I heard that word, I like, oh my God, uh, it's the best word in the life because this is exactly what I was doing all my childhood, hustling. When I was 13 years old, I was cleaning the graphite the like super uh, dirty stuff, unhealthy for their body, for the lungs, uh, like dusty stones full of uh, like radio radiation uh, dust. I was just a 13 year boy, just was cleaning that like uh, dirty, like a, uh, a miner was just like cleaning that with the toothbrush, special toothbrush for like, not toothbrush, but special brush, small one to clean those kind of stones. And again, I was hustling just to buy the ice cream for myself, you know, mm. that kind of, and this kind of hustle uh, was happening all the time. And like, uh, it's not about suffering. It's about uh, like survival mode. I'm calling that as a hustling all the time. Somewhere I'm going back to from work to drink the beer. I was doing the same, like because of average mindset, I was always like after the work uh, drinking the beer. But between that still, like as I was saying, 
party. Let's do it. Let's arrange this, this and that. No worries. I'm going to be handling. Like, let's do that. Let, let me handle it. And after that, when I went to UAE, everything went to the hustle mode in, term, in terms of making here and there extra couple of dollars. And like, it's so sm uh, slowly, slowly switched to the like uh, part times to extra dollars income to studying to like several, several other stuff. When I start my e-commerce business, like everything what was above, well, it, it was well, from the past, it wasn't hustle. That was just a childhood. The first year in e-commerce business was the biggest hustle in my life. Uh, when during the 365 days at least, I didn't sleep more than four hours. Two nights I was sleeping only 40 minutes in a night. And that is not fun. That was disaster and dangerous. I, I got almost four times or three times. I got almost cra uh, car crash just because like I was uh, starting the work at 7.30 a.m. Waking up at 6 because I need time for reading books. So from 6 to 7, 6.30 to 7, I was reading at least 10 pages of the book. And after that, moving to the office 7.30. From 6.30 p.m., I'm leaving the office. And 7.30, I'm all 6.30 in one hour, I'm already somewhere on private villa or like a uh, restaurant as a part-time. I'm working as a waiter, supervisor, private server in the villa and private parties for wealthy people. And like... Again and again, uh, like I was like working until 9 p.m., 11 p.m., or 2 a.m. if it's a nightclub or even 3 a.m. When I was coming back home, I was studying and continue working on my e-commerce business, starting the, uh, creating the store, running the ads, watching the YouTube videos to study it, and going to sleep around 4 a.m. and 6 a.m. again, I'm waking up and repeating the same stuff. No day off, nothing. And on the weekends when I have no job, I'm on during the day on the uh, video photo shootings for Bollywood movies, for the UAE commercials. Like it was the most funniest work uh, I believe there. But I'm just saying that that was the real hustle in my life, the biggest hustle in my life. And my business didn't work well. I, I lost everything. <laughs> and... And just because I didn't quit, I was able to understand how it working and overtake all the problems and finally, finally get my first results. I'm just tired listening to that, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned that the first year was a real, well, you said fail early and you said you lost everything. Talk us through that. What, what kind of happened? So uh, I read the book, uh, Robert Kiyosaki, July. Okay, now I understand that I want to run my business, what I'm going to be doing. I start Googling how I can make money online. And again, I'm the average person from Ukraine. Uh, for me, for you, for me, just to let you understand my world in the past. Advertising. What does it mean advertising? Marketing advertising. It means that Facebook, big corporation, Coca-Cola, huge corporation. They like, we need ads. We need ads on your platform. Okay, come to us. And I was imagining that so tens of people coming to from Coca-Cola to Facebook, they're sitting down, they discuss what kind of ads they want. They just like paying hundreds and hundreds of thousands for those ads, recording, shooting. And after that, Facebook taking those files and placing on the platform by themselves. And this is how I was seeing this kind of like business what I'm running right now. But uh, when I start searching online, how I can make money online, what I can do, what's the top like uh, possibilities in our days. You can take your laptop, log into business name manager, mm -hmm. launch your ad by yourself without going. Like it for me, it was mind blowing aga moment. It was the re first 26 years of my life. I was always asking myself who I want to be. I wasn't care. I was just like money, money, like surviving mode. But that moment, I realized I want to do that till end of my life. I want to be advertiser. I want to be a marketer. I want to run business related to advertising. I want to be related to that. So, and this is first time in my life I got something clear that uh, and I said to myself, whatever it takes, I'm going to be uh, get these things work. And I started creating my Shopify store. Uh, and I understood that I saved some cash. My wife left in July. I start saving on the part times and all this stuff. The living the seven other guys. So now I'm able to save. But instead of saving, I start investing. I create a store. 
I, I started searching for the products. Like I, I start like 29 of September, I launched my store and on the next day I already launched my first test. The problem is that I was watching tens of different people. First of all, 2017, people were not sharing the clear information. It was just like water in the ocean of information. So there wasn't too many guys like now, but now in YouTube, you can find out really clear stuff which is going to be helpful. That time it was possible as well. That But mistake, which is now, person can make it. And I done that time. It's called a newbie mistake that you follow in 10,000 different strategies from several other people. Instead of find out one or two who you can trust, who has social proof from the past. And when you see that this person, this is exactly example which you want to follow, learn from him. Follow his content, not everyone else. Follow what's working for him and do only that. But I was doing opposite. And I, oh, I need to put more, you know, the logic like, oh, if I got sale, it means if I will put more, I will get more. But at the end, it didn't work because you need to follow the algorithms. And I didn't know what algorithm means. I didn't know what is metrics means. I didn't know that actually tables are uh, could be managed. And like, you, you have to look on the KPIs. What does it mean, KPIs? What mm -hmm. do you mean? I was thinking just to put dollar in and, to remove, and take it out $3, you know? And I, I was doing stupid newbie mistake, which is everyone are doing, most of the people are doing. But the thing is, uh, usually people spend 100 bucks, well, let's say 1,000 bucks, and they're like, oh, shit, it doesn't work for me. I won't be doing it scam and so on. For me, I read that book. I promised to myself that I won't stop. I know that stuff is working. I know successful people, well, they're already done. I started joining the Facebook groups, and five with this where I became kind of, influencer in my space uh, in Facebook, first of all. And then I moved to Instagram later on in a couple of years. I done all the several mistakes by listening to everyone around and invested all what I have and even bought star borrow from my neighbors, star borrow from other friends to put it more and more and more. And my wife like, where is the money? Where is the money which you're safe? I said, yeah, yeah, I have it. No worries, no worries. But I hadn't. And like October when my baby delivery time came, I, I, I borrow money to fly to my wife uh, because uh, I, I made more than ever in my life. I start making really like around $3,000, something like that with part times and everything. But for me, it was incredible amount, incredible. And if I would be saving, I would be like nice, like I would be fine. But instead of that, I was throwing everything into the ads, everything into yeah. the knowledge. Like I buy a bowl of pay for one guy $300. He screwed me from UK and he blocked me. I, I invest in crypto from credit card, $3,000. I didn't have credit card in UAE. I went in the bank because crypto stuff show up. I like, oh my God, this is something as well I have to be in. And I took $3,000 invested in mining, mining company, scam everyone in January in two months. And like I lost and now I have debt of $3,000. <laughs> like all that stuff was against me again and again. And like, I knew that, and I was looking at other people that were quitting and quitting and quitting. And I'm like, no, I will be different. I will, I will figure it out. I will figure it out. I will. And my son already did burn it. And my wife said, if you won't stop what you're doing, because she was thinking that I'm in kind of sector. She were not understanding what e-commerce means. She were not understanding that actually people able to share their knowledge because in Ukraine, uh, in Russia, in like those kind of countries, uh, my home countries, like there, uh, if you share something, uh, like if you're successful, you will never share anything to anyone. You're going to be like this, staying in the corner and being the quiet person in the room. But in the United States, things got that mentality is different. Like the more you're sharing, the more you're learning, the more you're able to earn and blah, blah, blah. So I like, okay, if, if that is the stuff, I said to my wife, you cannot understand. There is a hundreds of people in Facebook group, everyone sharing their experience. And she was consuming that as a, some kind of sector that uh, they taking money from me. I, I said, no, I have online store. She do that. She didn't understand what an online store means. So anyway, uh, because of that kind of Ukrainian mentality, small, like small beliefs mentality, uh, she said, I will divorce on you if you won't stop. What is the, what is the savings? I, and I said to her, honestly, Dear, I, I have nothing, but believe me, I will be, I will return everything. She starts screaming. She said that, darn, like, if you won't come back immediately now to Ukraine, uh, you, we won't be living anymore together and so on. And I said, I, 
I really don't care what you are saying. I'm doing that for you and my son. And I just drop the phone and keep hustling, keep pushing it. And about to quit, I, I know I never had things to quit, but this is I'm calling about to quit moment. Because uh, every single, it's another point about the successful people, what is common thing. Sometimes happen in such a tough moments in your life, in your journey, that 19.9% of people are quitting because it's too hard to handle. And this, when you have this kind of mod- moment, believe me, if you will overtake that, guys, then not instantly, but in a matter of a week or two, you'll find out the solution to your problems and it will start working for you somehow. So it's proven because I've been there. And at the moment, I'm staying in the 14th floor, gas company, suit, tie, shoes, like kind of I'm looking in the, in the window and I'm completely broke inside because I lost everything. It is January uh, 2018. I'm staying looking on the window. It's a sun, uh, sunset in Dubai, almost uh, end of uh, working time. Uh, for this night, I'm supposed to go to a restaurant to do the part time. And I'm staying looking in that window and like I'm completely really feeling myself disaster. I have no cash. I have no uh, any more uh, money. Uh, next payout on next Sunday and now it's Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever. So like I don't have enough cash to invest in the ads. My, and now I receive a call from my friend uh, who is really one of the best friends right now who we, I met online. And like he said, have you seen? Have you seen? I said, what's happening? People are killing themselves. I'm like, what? Like, do you remember that mining company where you and me invested? Like, I said, yeah, I put credit card there. Yeah, but they scam everyone. The website does not exist anymore. I like, what? I start checking and I understand that I lost credit, three thousand dollars, and uh, I don't have any more there. Uh, except, oh yeah, uh, to, together with all what was mm-hmm. the, what was in my brain that moment, and my I staying in that kind of it was meeting room. I'm looking in this kind of uh, like sunset and I'm, I'm shaking like this, like my knees are shaking and I'm, I'm, I'm scared as hell. I'm almost crying. Not almost. I was really trying to catch myself, but I'm crying and mm, staying and thinking what I'm going to be doing. Like I have no cash to continue. I have, uh, I have no debt of $3,000. I cannot even, even, even if I listen my wife, I can't, I can't go back to Ukraine. Because now I have 3,000 low, which is $3,000 in, in one shot to throw. That moment, it wasn't like even in my brain possible. So um, I said to myself, like, okay, I'm shaking, like, and I'm scared. And uh, I like, what I'm going to be doing? And I said to my, if I will quit now, what will happen? And I understand I'm already in deep, deep, deepest shit moment in my life. So if I will quit, I will keep staying here. And now I need to handle that without possibilities to make more than I ever wish and staying in this work and like trying to figure yeah, it won't help. But if I will continue and after that, I'd instantly ask him how, how would I do? But if I would not stop, maybe there is a chance that I will get it work. And like I said to myself, done i send a message sorry i won't come today for the part-time it's only one night when i didn't work i went i just sit down in the car without music without audio books without nothing by the way i didn't listen to music that period of time without audio books i just want uh, went home in complete silence i came in the room i left my phone on the table next to my bed and i just went out and for next couple hours i was just walking around it was already dark i was walking around in the albarsha in uh, Dubai, Al Barsha area, I was walking, walking, walking in silence, just walking. And after that, uh, I came back home and get sleep. Like this is the best practice, which is my sales people are doing now when they are sucks in sales. I'm telling them go put your phone down and go and fucking walk. Mm-hmm. Always because I know this is what was the crucial moment for me. And actually, it's very, they they get in sales after that. It, it, it is the moment where like you you relieve the stress. You just leave it all like, you know, I could not stop. I have to run on the hundred miles again and again. But when you one time allowed yourself to stop and do not think about anything, you're, you refresh your energy, your brain start working on different mood. 
So and when I went to sleep, I would just woke up six six thirty a.m. as always, and you said to myself, "Let's go," and like and, and laughing on myself. What do you mean, let's go? What change? Nothing has changed. Yeah. But the thing I was uh, driving the car that moment, and I thought like, okay, what's I'm gonna be doing? So now I can get from him five hundred, from him three hundred dirhams. Like I can like control this, so I won't spend. I will be spending very carefully. So I was trying figure it out. And it was middle of January, 20, uh, 29th of January, 26th of January, my friend calling me, who is as well trying. The, uh, we met each other on one small conference in UAE. Uh, she calling me like, have you heard the news? i like, what kind of news? Do you remember Mark Hager, some American guy mm. who is, uh, was running the mastermind where he is going Facebook Live in the closed uh, community, which is, called, uh, which is like costing $97 per month were to be there and he's checking your ads during the call and telling you what to do and when you're doing that it's like uh, to start working i like yeah i heard but 97 bucks a month it's uh, too expensive this is was my, my mentality <laughs> and she said yeah yeah but you know what he made until end of january 50 percent discount now it's 47 dollars a month and it was it is like 150 dirhams i like 150 dinos. I cannot afford it, but it was to try it. Like I said to my ID, I have to take this risk and try it. So 29th of January, first call with Mark and his community. He shows me what does it mean KPIs. <laughs> he shows me what like simple stuff, but the thing is I start listening and following only one person. And he said, you have a winning product for a while, which is supposed to give you sales. Do X, Y, Z. And let's speak day after tomorrow because it was like every other day and see what's happening. I made exactly what he said and got start getting sales. And first 15 days working with mentor, I got $8,000 in the profitable sales. And it was the blessing which has happened after two day, two weeks approximately when I about I would be able to fail. But I just denied that moment. And after a couple of weeks, you see, I received the call. I received possibilities. I followed, I made it, I show myself that it's possible and just keep going failing. But now with the proven concept and already more skills and knowledge in my brain, how things are working. So now it's, I'm not blind. Now I know what needs to be done and repeat. So by that being said, all this long story, sorry for that. Uh, for all of, uh, to summarize, some people, uh, every single person will have at the beginning of their journey, such kind of tough moments. Or you're supposed to quit or whatever it takes, continue and figure it out. Always every single person who done it, like if to read some books or listening for some successful people, they'll share with you some kind of their own scenario story and they didn't quit. They just decided to move on. And most majority of people who would listen, they try something. And when something smaller happened, they start directly quit. You, you start seeing this kind of, you know, understanding of what's the real formula of success. There is no magic. There is like really just decisions which we are making. <laughs> Sorry, it's so long. No, no, it's a, it's a great, it's a, definitely a great um, example of, of not quitting, which is definitely sounds like it's in your DNA. You mentioned as well when we're offline about another kind of costly failure as well, which was sort of further on in your kind of entrepreneurial journey. Do you want to say a little bit about that and the impacts of that? And and I suppose also, was there any similarities between this failure and that kind of initial year? Uh, yeah, <laughs> so that was really expensive one and now on the another level expensive. So uh, the thing is that uh, I would say that one year background I mean, hustling during the life and so on, okay? But that one year of background in my e-commerce journey shows me that everything can be manageable. This is our quote in my agency, JSM Growth Agency. Uh, when we have a big troubles, before I was running left and right, oh my God, oh my God, I was nervous. But my mentor, by the way, Mark, Mark Hagar, my first mentor in my life, still my mentor for five years, six years. But now we are, oh, he's my mentor in real estate. 
but I'm just, he's my life, my lifestyle mentor, I would say. How to run business, how to become a better person than you are, how to become an uh, investor in real estate. Before it was just Facebook ads, before. And the thing is that he said to me, you can manage, stop panicking and just like, uh, like focus and you will find out the solution. Try again and again. And this is like where like uh, now it's a quote in my company. Guys, we can manage whatever it is. We can manage any kind of problem. And if it's not a health problem, I mean real disease, you know, per person, human can manage anything. I've been even in Ukraine during the war started. And I, I saved my son from all that disaster when it was not possible. It's a separate story, but I made it happen because if you're trying, you will be able to get what you need. And the, here it is that uh, that problem. So October, I was saying already that for 2018, October, we made 150,000. I met already one guy from Mastermind and like we decided to be a partners. So he managing the store, I'm managing the ads. This is my like uh, my my skills and his skills. I hate ad, I hate management the store. I'm not English speaker guy. So I obviously grammar issues and so on, especially at that moment, my English was really bad. And I like, let's do this. You're going to manage the store. I'm going to be managing ads because I love ads. I already was making here and there something in that. So we made 50,000 together in the first months in October, so November 150, December 150 plus, uh, February, March 250 plus. And so we start scaling so fast and it was shoes product. So here it is, this, this thing which I was about, I was sharing with you in offline. It was a shoes niche. Which is like definitely uh, you need to check the quality, you need to check the sizing, you need to check your suppliers. And this is as a newbie. Now I figure out the ads and like I'm thinking now uh, there is no tomorrow. But guys, it's just beginning of the, it's the top of the iceberg, you know. You need to understand how to handle customer service. You need to understand that before scaling. We were scaling like no tomorrow because we can't. But at the end, customer service, uh, em employers uh, hiring, uh, suppliers management, qu products quality, the number one thing, products quality haven't been checked. So uh, before the biggest fail happened that moment, we received an email from our client, uh, from one of our buyers. Like, hey, what kind of crap are you selling? We were receiving here and there some like shitty emails, but it's fine. I mean, right now I'm, I'm we we got like ten, to maybe even hundred thousands of sales in whole my journey, and always there are some uh, like stupid stuff happening. Yeah. But we were ignoring. But here was one email from a really educated person. Like, guys, I, it's embarrassing what kind of crap you're selling. Give me your home address. I will send it that to your home. I like, hey. Maz, he, my, my, my business partner, Maz, I said, let's ask him to deliver that to you because he was in the United States. And that was as well a powerful partnership. I knew I need documents in the United States for banks, for the LLC and so on. And at that moment, I didn't know yet how to open that on remote. And I said, uh, let him to send it to you and let's see the quality. We never thought about the quality. We're just uh, selling, selling, selling. And pictures are really so nice. Pictures are so bright. Our ads were on pictures. Uh, shoes like leather, a uh, leather brown one, black one. It's Oxford shoes, classic. Really looks nice, luxury. <laughs> but uh, we receive uh, email and we answer. Okay, here is the address. We do apologize if you wish. We can send you another one. He said, No, no, no. I want you just to smell it and see. And like we received the delivery, my we received the delivery. <laughs> And my partner is calling me on video. Usually we are speaking only audio, but he like, hey man, like you have to see it. He said, my house is smelling as hell with some toxic stuff. Like when I opened the box, I like, what do you mean? You remember that guy who was supposed to send delivery? I said, yeah, look on this crap, what we are selling. And he wrote it, our email to us that I will send to you in exactly the same way how I receive it. And he sent us the box in the box it the box it was from his end but what how it has been delivered it was the garbage bag black plastic garbage bag we were inside two ugly plastic shoes uh inside which is like it's not real shoes it's some kind of plastic it's not a leather a 
and when you open the bag, and this bag, uh, plastic bag was roll roll it by tape, you know, and like uh, he he just like saying, man, it's insane, it's uh, like I feel embarrassing, and we he opened it and he said it's so smelling, it's not possible to breathe next to these shoes, he, like it's toxic materials. I like whoa, what are we doing? And we were already up above two hundred fifty k a month, you know. Like, oh my God, okay, let's speak to our supplier about the quality, about everything. We start, she like, yeah, yeah, it's fine, no worries. Like, uh, like we find out first time when uh, suppliers are lying. We, and we like, no, it's fine, like, he's awesome, we can trust him. And like, we understand that we're going to be scaling and he promised us better quality and so on. And like, we like, let's push forward because it's China New Year. Let's make sure that we have enough. And like, uh, because it was, we were paying him 50K, 20K instantly, you know, because of the huge value of the orders, the two supplier, we were sending him already big amounts. And like, let's pay him like double or triple from what we usually do. And the most uh, often ordered items he will prepare for us in the stock. So during China New Year, we won't be sold out. So we just like paid to the guy and he like, yeah, everything is awesome, guys. Let's just uh, push, uh, no worries. And... Uh, the China New Year happened, we were squeezing, we were pushing, we like uh, start dealing with that. Uh, and like suddenly we start receiving hundreds of the emails from mad people that they never ever after uh, emails of orders, people who ordered it like 35 days ago. It was middle of March and people start like uh, complaining that they never received the item. And again, and again, and again, and again, and again, it became like nightmare. And our uh, tribe hold it. I don't want to lie. I don't remember, but it was around forty thousand or something, or sixty thousand. Uh, and we and we were as well newbie in scaling. We were not playing smart about changing this tribe to another tribe, changing this tribe to Shopify payments, changing to some other mentioned provider. We just like it's on hold, thousands and thousands of dollars, and we keep it keep it live and like keep receiving the like right. 12,000 a day orders to the same stripe. So our hold is becoming bigger. So cash flow is not coming in. It's just on the hold and it's becoming bigger and bigger and the hold for 180 days. And we like, bro, like it's fine. We can manage, we have cash, but at the end we were paying for cash. So for, for ads so much that like cash is not coming in. It's on hold and it's becoming pool, becoming bigger, bigger and bigger and PayPal holding us as well because of the these complaints people start opening charge bags uh, and like requesting for refunds and so on and we got so much crap from from it and like paypal hold it around 20 plus thousands as well and again we are so newbie uh that we didn't like decide to turn off this uh, paypal we just let it be you know and paypal hold it's not 180 days from the email which you receive it's 180 days from the last activities on the account and we will keep using the same account for like quite long think is think we lost on this moment uh in this particular moment over two hundred thousand dollars in the cost of products on the charge bags and the supplier never ever replied to us when we start texting hey man what is the items what's happening your your uh orders numbers are fake what's happening man he just got the pull of the cash from us and ran away. Like the thing is my, my partner wasn't the same like me with the same background as me. And he like, man, we cannot manage with how we would manage. It's not possible. And I, I, I was always the person in our team, the most calm, the most like, hey man, stop, stop, uh, stop panicking. Let's think. What kind of credit card uh, do you have? How much we can increase the limit? Okay, what about that credit card? What about this? What about, okay, how much you have? Okay, we can handle this. Let's slow down the ads. Let's try to figure it out. Let's ask people. I just like brainstorming and he like, bro, like, thank you that you are like calm because I cannot think. I like, fine, fine, no worries. And we like, we figured it out. It was so tough. And uh, we like uh, lost everything what we had uh, in terms of value. Plus we have on hold on Stripe we have it on hold on PayPal. On PayPal, we never get our money back. Never, ever, ever. They never, they scam in people a lot. I mean, PayPal is the most scamming platform in the earth in terms of like finances. 
and uh, Stripe returned it to us in 180 days when it was actually already like doesn't matter because we were recovering. We were like trying to pay out our credit cards. So we slowly already on the smaller speed, but slowly, slowly start recovering and like uh, cover all our expenses. And Stripe finally returned it uh, like whatever value was there. Just saying that uh, that moment, like almost everyone would be quit and just let it let it be. Because handle such kind of situations and thousands of the mad customers, like you, you really must have enough straights in your head, in your brain to be able to take that responsibilities, to accept the, those that fail and handle to find the solution. Instead of just shut down the store, let it be. Whoever you open dispute, uh, money already on, on the fault, doesn't matter. Whatever you left over, I will collect in six months and fine. No, we were just like overtaking that problem and it wasn't easy. And again, because like I believe that everything can be manageable, especially after seeing the war in 2022, in 2022, the war in 2023 now in Israel and still in Ukraine. After these things happening in the world and people going through those kind of struggles, like the business problems to, to speak about and cry about, mm. we're supposed to be real, real pussies if we're going to be doing that. I'm just uh, repeating that to myself when I see that unmanageable situation. I try to imagine myself back to the war when I was sleeping three days in the car with my son and like uh, remember those feelings and what I was saying to my top managers on audio messages in the car that if I will handle this situation, the business problems will be never, ever, ever a problem for us. And when I see the huge business problem, I'm saying to myself, oh, I remember those words. This is not a problem we'll handle. Because that is was real thing, which is like scared me like nothing in my life. Yeah. You mean everything's easier compared to that? Exactly. I mean, yeah. everything is manageable. Yeah. Yeah. So just kind of wrapping up, what would you say or what advice would you give to listeners who have experienced the setback or a difficult moment or a failure within their business? I've, I would say something similar to what I was saying before, but as a summary, like, listen, uh, failure is a failure when you accept it and quit and then you can say I fail in X, Y, Z direction and I accept that and fine. For some of the people, it will be a correct decision because like I want to give short example. I, I done mentorship for one and a half years in e-commerce for the beginners because I was trying to help people like I was because I knew how important it is to have someone back to your shoulder. And like two guys were partners from Ukraine as well. And like they... Uh, it didn't work for them. So they invested, they tried it together with me and dropshipping Shopify model didn't work for them. But on my mentorship, I was teaching people as well mentality, not only the uh, algorithms, not only the secret hacks. I was teaching as well understanding of what is going to, what shit is waiting for you upfront and how you have to manage it. So my summary here, those guys now super successful email marketing, Shopify related business owners. And the thing is, they just was listening to what I was saying. If something is not working for you, look, when you start in some direction, let's speak about e-commerce. You decide to all start your e-commerce business in two months, you failed, you lost here and there something or everything what you had or just a bit, but the thing you lost and it's failure. Yeah. Okay. But you know, you are the smartest person who you know around you in e-commerce in our days. So don't undervaluate your past experience by having this experience to look left and right in the same niche and see if you can implement your skills, new skills to succeed. If dropshipping it doesn't work for you, if Facebook doesn't work for you, what if I will try YouTube? What if I will try email SMS? The guys decided to try email SMS and they built successful high 
valuable email SMS marketing agency related to e-commerce Shopify business owners. And they are still running this agency after 2019 when we were working together. And I didn't know about that. They just came back to me in eight months or 12 months and share with me that story. And the thing is, another person came back to me from France. His name is Ross and he is now living in Abu Dhabi. He used to work in night shift in factory as a, as a security guy. And he was trying to get a successful dropshipping store. And guess what? I was teaching him mentality as well. And he, it didn't work for him on dropshipping in that moment. And he didn't have enough cash to continue, but he was laughing the idea. But because I, when people try saying, sorry, we won't be continuing because we, we don't have any more passion or, or uh, cash to continue, I'm always giving them this advice. Think about before quitting completely. Look around. This guy uh, texted to me to, to be before the war. It was a few days before the war, 2022. After two years, Anatoly, thank you so much for what you teach me, what you taught me, because like now I moved to Abu Dhabi and I have my successful YouTube agency. So that's like, I have only maybe up to five people from hundreds of people who I used to work who really listen and now have successful businesses. One of them has several dropshipping stores. By his end, he built his own team and he's still running dropshipping stores like by himself on the high value, 100, 300, 500k a month each store. So here is the summary of it. If something is not working for you before quitting, remember, you're smarter than you were two months ago when you started. So instead of throwing this experience into the garbage, high, mm. high performing potential experience, think where this experience can be implemented. Because one of those five guys got a marketing director position in his, uh, in his country. I believe he is from Serbia, I don't want to lie, but from small country in, uh, in Europe. He texted to me, he became a marketing director in small, a small company in Serbia. Why? Because he knew more than anyone in that company about e-commerce, about advertising, about Facebook ads. So he blew their mind about so like knowledge, but it's simple. But for everyone else, it's a blow mind. So here is an example. He lost money on dropshipping to try. But after that, he got in six months after we stopped working together, just he got his... Uh, no, I don't know if it's a dream job, but he he became really a marketing director of the yeah. of some kind of company in his city. So never quit. Look around. If something doesn't work for you, there is always a solution. Look for the solution and you find out. Amazing. So final question. If you could go back in time and stop those difficult moments, those that failure of the first year, the 200,000 loss you had from that supplier issue, would you erase that from completely ever happening in your life? To be honest with you, I, I was uh, thinking about several times in the past. If you were ask me before 2017, somewhere 2016 and before, as average mentality person, I would say definitely yes, because I would believe that it would be the right decision and I will make things better and blah, blah. Right now, I would not change anything at all because I won't be here today where I am and where I am going if it's not back-end experience, especially tough experience because tough experience make you stronger, make you smarter, make you sharp, sharper and make you who you are and this has allowed you to be unstoppable. This is what I believe on and uh, I would not change anything I would just love to see that from the side and cry and smile and laugh and just like, I don't know, just look on that, how, how everything was, but I would not touch it. Brilliant. So a quick fire round just to end. These are short questions and short answers. So failure is? Uh, it, it's not a problem. Failure is, it's, it depends. Uh, it depends how you look on it. What's your life's mission? Be the best version of myself every single day. What's one piece of advice that you would want to give to other people on your deathbed? Enjoy your life. Name one habit that keeps you resilient. 
for sure radiant. If you could live forever, would you take it? It's a tough one. I believe no, because the, the like, I believe no, but because it's scared to die, I would think a lot, <laughs> but believe no. What's one surprising fact that not many people know about you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> hard to say. Surprising fact. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. Good one. I really, it's need to ask my wife. My wife would say instantly, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, most probably, most probably that is like, uh, I have no feelings for several material stuff. Like when war started, everyone was speaking about material, losing the flat and so on. I was in giving a shit about it and still I don't care. And like most probably that is what we surprise. And is there a person you could recommend that you think I should have on as a guest? Mm, several. I have really good enough uh, quantity of people who would be great, great asset to your podcast. Have you got an example? Uh. Uh, Eddie Malouf, Ashton Shank, uh, like, yeah, plays two, two of my great friends, uh, uh, Max, uh, Mark Marda, Mark Hager, like several people who I know, they would be great uh, storytellers and uh, they have quite success uh, stories uh, with a lot of fails and incredible results. Sounds perfect. Um, so Anatoly, where can people find you and connect with you? Yeah. So uh, the best way where I would be replying personally in DMs, it is Instagram, which is Ecom by Anatoly, Anatoly Labinsky. So this is the place where I would reply, uh, as well. If you would like to know about our companies, GSM growth agency.com. And if you want to learn a value, uh, get valuable information for free from uh, my site about uh, case studies, uh, how to scale the store, how to get results with Facebook or TikTok ads. Um, my YouTube channel where I'm sharing a lot of free stuff, uh, Anatoly Labinsky. So you can go there and watch some of the videos. Definitely you will learn something. Perfect. Thank you. Well, I'll put all that in the show notes so people can um, connect with you. So thank you so much for, for being here. I know you've got to run, but I really appreciate your time and your honesty in all the stories that you shared. So um yeah thank you so much thank you i appreciate it just for having me here it was really awesome thank you man pleasure thank you for listening to beyond the fail really hope you enjoyed this episode and learned something new please do subscribe to the show and leave us a review it really does help us to grow and to reach more people do follow us on social media too we're at jeswood on instagram and at beyond the fail on youtube and also on linktree thanks again and see you soon